So the holiday season is quickly approaching, and if you're on a diet, especially keto, you know that it's a treacherous time of year. Mm -hmm. Many people fall off their diet during this time because of all of the nostalgia involved. So in this video, we're gonna give you guys some tips on how to stay on track during the holiday season. So tip number one is to have the intention of staying keto even during the holiday season. It seems like it's common sense, but it's really not because there's so much nostalgia during the holidays that sometimes you will tell yourself, I plan to cheat during the holidays, and just doing that can set yourself up for failure. Sarah and I are not angels on this lifestyle. We do go off from time to time, but we do not have the intention of going off. We don't plan cheat meals. We try to stay keto as long as we can, and it ends up being okay for the most part. If you're going to a family party and you know that your aunt makes the best spina cocuta, which our aunt did, yeah, she did, and you have this intention of, I'm definitely going to eat that, then you're going to go out the deep end. Trust me, I know. I ate like 16 slices of it one year. Yeah, but the problem with that is not only that meal that you're going to eat at your holiday party. It's all of the meals that you're probably going to eat before you go. Like for me, it's like an entire day or weekend of cheating. It's never just that one meal. And that's what the problem is. It's that you don't get back on right away. It's like a series of cheating and then you gain weight and then you're back to where you started. That's a good point to make is that a cheat meal is one thing. But if you're saying saying, well, Christmas is next week, I will just start again after Christmas. Well, now you have a week. Yep of going off the deep end. So the mentality behind staying keto as much as you can, even if you slip up because someone brought holiday cookies to the office or your grandma made her famous pie that she only makes during this time of year. According to us, it's okay to fall off every once in a while. We are human, we have nostalgia around food and it's unreasonable to think that you're going to be keto every day for the rest of your life. However, if you just give yourself a pass for weeks or months at a time, there is a long time before now and New Year's Day. Like this is the middle of October right now. And so if we just said, hey, I'm gonna start in January, that is a long time, that's months away. You could gain a ton of weight in between that time I as could well. easily gain 30 pounds within that time. So what I plan to do and what I've always done over the past four years is to say, I am going to eat keto every day. And if I happen to slip up, well, I slipped up, I'm going to start eating keto again tomorrow. And guess what? You may have some slip ups along the way, but it's not going to be every day for every meal. But you have like the scarcity mindset that you have to fill it all in. You have to get your fill. Yeah. So, like that's how I used to think. I'm gonna get my fill because starting in January, I'm gonna be all serious again. I could end up gaining 30 pounds from right. now and then because I need to experience everything that the culinary <laughs> world has to offer. Honestly, it's not even the good stuff. I would eat like chicken tenders and like potato wedges from the grocery store just because I won't be able to have that later. So the mentality here is very important. Stay keto in your mind. Say, I'm going to eat keto every meal until Christmas or even at Christmas and then take it from there. That way, even if you eat 95% keto and 5% not keto, you still come out ahead. Our next tip to stay keto is to never go anywhere hungry. Emily and I like to do something called throwing it down the gullet where we will eat protein before we go anywhere and it really does help us stay on track. So Emily and I have done this before where we have like a holiday event or a party or something. We will go beforehand to the McDonald's drive-thru, get a quarter pounder, and just eat the meat and the cheese. And by the time that we get to the party, we are full. And you're not gonna eat a lot when you're there because you've already eaten a ton before you got there. So we think spoil your appetite. You know how your grandma, your aunt would be like, don't spoil your appetite. We're saying spoil your appetite. Spoil it before you even leave the door. Even if it's some like leftovers that you have in the fridge, cheese. some deli meat, something, eat your fill before you walk out that door. It's going to give you so much control. Sarah and I talked about this last year on our channel, our other channel, Keto Twins, and people were saying, you know what, I tried this and it worked. It's not about not participating in the meal at all, okay? It's about giving you the control back to say, I am not thinking from like this pit in my stomach that says, I want to eat everything in sight. You can make the decision. It's giving you a clear head and you might decide, you know what, I don't need it. But you might decide, you know what, I only have this once a year. I'm going to eat this pie or these cookies or the stuffing, you will not be able to eat as much as you would before because you have like that base of like protein and fat in mm -hmm. your stomach. Even if you were to indulge in the things that you miss and the things that everyone is pushing on you, you will not be able to eat as much as you used to. The other thing is, is that if you go to these parties and you're keto up until the day and then you decide to go off the deep end, 
you will be sick yeah. when you eat this stuff because your gut biome has changed, AKA, do I even need to say it? Your gut biome You're has going to changed. Have issues. You're going to have issues, okay? Don't make me say <laughs> it. Like, I have done it where <laughs> I said it the last time, I went off the deep end, ate my mom's stuffing, I ate like probably a pound of it. It felt like a rock in your stomach? No, worse than that. It felt like um, Sigourney Weaver and Alien. My stomach felt like it was being like ripped apart. I laid on the couch the entire night. Like I ruined Christmas because I just went off the deep end like that. Eaten before I went, I would have had a couple, a small bowl of stuffing. Little, yeah. 50 little, carbs, yeah. whatever. And I would have been fine. But no. Of course I didn't follow my own advice. So actually this is before we figured it out. This is before we had like this strategy and it is a strategy and that's going to save you. So what we like about the strategy is that it allows you to act as if you might have it, which allows you to participate in the nostalgia of Christmas and of Thanksgiving and all of these events. You can like act like you might. It's not like I'm worried about it. It's when I get there, I will eat something before I go and then I will decide and I will be far better off than if I went there hungry. We also say this before you go to the grocery store or anything ever. Never leave the house on an empty stomach right. because you're not going to be able to think clearly enough to make the right decision. Even if I'm going out to dinner with people, I will eat something keto before I go. Right. And then it doesn't look too bad on the menu when you're like, maybe I'll just have like a salad. Some wings. Or wings or a burger with the bun. I'm not that hungry anyway. Right. Then you can indulge in something keto. If you eat before you go, you're going to see your mental fortitude increase and you can make the right decision instead of going down the other path. So the next one is be careful about how much you drink. Drinking can lead to poor decisions. That's why we drink with moderation, if not at all. Again, you should be eating before you drink because once you do, the veil can come off. You could just like go crazy. Mm -hmm. So not only that, but alcohol really hits me a lot harder when I'm on keto. Mm -hmm. um, for the last four years, I'm such a lightweight. A couple of drinks and I'm like donezo. Yeah. When you're in ketosis, your body will prioritize burning off the alcohol mm -hmm. first and it can hit you a lot faster, which can lead to poor decisions. So just keep that in mind. Another strategy that you could try to apply to any type of holiday party or a holiday situation is to, while you're there, pick the key items first. Right. We talk about, you know, going in not hungry, but say that you didn't have time to eat anything beforehand. That happens where you are too busy, you know, packing gifts, wrapping gifts, and you just have to get to the party right away. Go to the table and pick the keto items first. And before you say there's nothing offered that's keto, yes, there is. There's usually always a vegetable of some sort and there is a protein. Eat those first, wait 10 minutes, and then see if there's anything that you're like really dying to try. Right. And um, that's what we do. We prioritize the protein. And then if there's something like my mother's stuffing that we always talk about that we love, you're not even going to be able to eat a lot of it anyway. So if you want to have a couple tablespoons, a half a cup of it, so be it. But you prioritize the protein and the vegetables first. It really does take away that little devil on your shoulder, the monster that's like, oh, I want to just eat everything in sight. I remember I used to go and I would go to a buffet and it's like embarrassing to think about now because I'm not a buffet person. But I would never I was pick... a Chinese buffet person, not like but an old country buffet person. If, say I went to old country buffet or something like yeah. that. I would never go up to the buffet and get the expensive stuff. Right. I would get mashed potatoes, french fries, pizza, bread, bread, pizza. These are like the cheapest things. The cheapest things that you can make on the menu and I'm paying for a buffet. And <laughs> by the time, that's why they put, by the way, that's why they put the meat at the end. It's so that you don't over order on the meat. You have to ask the guy to, to carve yeah, the meat. Yeah, that's, I don't want to go up to They anyone. don't want you to take that one. I don't know why, because that's the expensive stuff. That's the stuff also that's going to fill you up. So get the turkey, get the ham, eat all of that. You wait 10 minutes and then you say, okay, I'm of sound mind. Yeah. I can decide now. Do I want this pie? Do I want the stuffing? Do I want all that? You might, but you might not. People who don't have like binging mentalities, they don't think like this. They don't have that like in their brain to have like a system of what you should do. Like I should have a salad because last time I had this. Right. People who are like naturally can control their weight, they think like this. Yeah. It took a lot of like coming to terms with, wow, I have this binge mentality. I need to put roadblocks in my mind so that I can like give myself a chance to make the right decision, right. right? And so these are all things that we've learned over four years of time. But like, if you implement these things, you are not going to go as crazy as you think that you're going to during the holidays. And you know what? Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, that's three days, three days. But you know what? 
what if you don't do this and you say it's October, it's Halloween, Halloween fine, four days. That's yeah. how many days in between? November, that's 60 days. You it's could ten. go off for 60 days or you could go off for four. We would much rather you go off for four days than to say, hey, I'm just gonna start again in January because guess what? When January 1st rolls around, and let's be honest, no one dies on January 1st, it's always January 2nd, you're going to step on the scale and if you decide to go off the deep end during the holidays, you're going to be 25 pounds heavier. I've done it. Ooh, Oh, like in January, January 2nd rolls around, I'm just gonna be a completely different person. No, mitigate the damage, make preparations, do the best you can, enjoy your holiday, and that is what our advice is. I also think it's important to give yourself grace during this period of time. You know, like Emily and I, we had been gaining weight for so many years that actually maintaining a weight is also a victory. If you guys, you know, are the same weight after that whole holiday period rolls around, give yourself some credit. You weren't gaining during that period. You're not always gonna lose weight anyway. And part of this journey is staying keto as much as you can, and sometimes you're not gonna lose weight. So that's what I would also say and contribute is that give yourself some grace during the holiday season. It's a tough time for everyone. You're gonna be seeing a lot of people and- There's a lot of memories right. and nostalgia involved, a lot of emotions seeing people during the holidays, especially after the pandemic and people getting back into the swing of things like with family and whatnot. There's lots of like pitfalls that can happen along the way. So give yourself grace, try your best, and be conscious of the fact that you can always make your next meal a key meal and you don't have to deal with the repercussions of gaining 25 pounds during the holidays. If you guys want to see other videos by us, you can click on one of the videos on the screen and we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Sarah. And I'm Emily. And, and we, we are, are the Keto, Keto Twins, Twins signing, signing out. out. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. What's it called? Technically, Technically Keto. Keto.